Hey, Zero Cool Podcast. Welcome. Happy Sunday, everybody. Um, in studio with us today, the DRP, a.k.a. Donnie Polinski. Woo! Holy Ruckus. shit. Ruckus. That is the loudest. <laughs> <laughs> My headphones. A um, couple of things I got to go over first before we get started. Uh, we are sponsored by joinplayboy.com. Uh, just click on, click on the link, support Zero Cool Podcast, and subscribe. There's a custom gallery that's put up every week just for you guys. Um couple other things I wanted to say for those of you who came out to my gigs uh, this last week. We were off last week due to Easter. I wasn't able to plug them, but I was at Brothers for uh, last week, Saturday, and this past Friday. Um, slowly but surely getting back to normal with uh, getting back into DJing and stuff like that. So hopefully more of that is down the road, and uh, hopefully we can get back to, to doing business. If you came out, uh, uh, thank you. Also, big shout to DJ Analog. She stopped through. Uh, and said what's up it was great to see her she's now living in kansas city um i said maybe i'd come down there and come party in kc they got amazing barbecue so um and, and tech nine lives there uh, yeah and tech nine <laughs> lives there. there's actually the, when i was there there was a huge billboard yeah i was like they were like promoting like tech nine for something that was going on. i was like no he's shit. the king of kc man yeah so i was like fuck yeah uh what else do i got going on oh um jägermeister behind the shot mix if you have not yet checked it checked it out it is up on mixcloud uh, I believe we are doing the barcode graphic, correct, Brandon? Yep. So uh, all you have to do is there will be a graphic at the bottom of where I'm talking. I'm assuming like right here somewhere. Yep. Right there. I don't. I don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get, I'll look up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if you scan that with your phone, it'll take you a direct link to uh, to go check out that mix. Uh, Actually, after a couple of white claws, I'm gonna look down there. <laughs> 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 and then uh, last but certainly not least, big shout out to my good friend, uh, Chicago Nick. He opened up uh, Shadow Personal Training. If, so if you're in Chicago area and you're listening to this podcast, go check him out. He's at 2618 Halstead Avenue down in Chicago. He is one of the best guys in the world, the uh, former head trainer for Equinox. Um, and it, I talk about him constantly on the podcast. He always comes to the UFC fights with us over at Brothers. And now, officially getting started now, we got everything out of the way. Donnie. DRP, welcome on out. It's been. I'll try not to yell. No, yell as much as you want to. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll yell away from the mic. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, welcome on out. I, I'm finally glad to get you in here. Number one, and number two. I don't think I've seen you in like almost two years now. Uh uh-uh. oh, since the pandemic for yeah. sure. Um, I think the last time I saw you, we were out in Anaheim and you were playing with MOD Classic. Oh fuck that! We went to that strip club afterwards. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I mean. I went to school, but you're like, I gotta go to church in the morning. <laughs> Bring the so, bed. so my, uh, I, I haven't brought this up yet. My, uh, my girlfriend's dad actually tuned into my podcast last yeah. week. Yeah. And he was like, he's like, he's doing a really good job. He made his guests cry. <laughs> and so she was just like, she's like, please, like, ignore all this stuff, the, the, crazy shit that he talks about. But we yeah, shouldn't it, be on this podcast together then, right hey, now. No, no, it's all good. Yeah, right. But yeah, the last time we had hung out, we we ended up getting blackout drunk and going to a strip club, and it was one of those that like was that in Anaheim? That was in Anaheim. Oh, that was after the Do- the Dollhouse show, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Dal- so the Dollhouse show. Yep, yep. That actually that whole thing worked out really well because you had plugged the fact that you were on tour at the time. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm like you're gonna be out in the West Coast. I was like, well, I'm gonna be out in that area at the same time. Yeah. Um I remember what I was out there for. Um, Cassie, one of the guests on the show, uh, Cassie Lederbach, him and I flew out to. Flew out to L.A. Or no, we flew out, We flew into Anaheim. I yeah. think they actually have their own airport. Flew into Anaheim to go catch uh, the UFC fights. It's when... Uh, I think there was a UFC fight out yeah. there. I remember you... Yeah. Daniel Cormier was fighting uh, Stipe Miocic, and Anthony was fighting uh, Nate Diaz. Actually, there was a there was a great fight. Yoel Romero fought... Uh, um, I forgot his first name. Costa. God damn, that was a fucking banger for three rounds. But yeah, the next day you were playing in Anaheim, and I was like, yeah, it was like a Sunday night or some yeah. shit. Yeah, and I was like, fuck it, dude, I'm gonna stick around. And that was the last. Day. That was the last date of that tour with Mod. Yeah, yeah, we did a whole West Coast run, dude. That was a blast, and it was one of those too that was like, I'm so. I'm so used to being in Wisconsin. Like I had a bunch of joints on me. I was like, <laughs> I like, rolled up. I was like, I was like, does anyone give a shit if I smoke weed? They're like, no, no, just don't shoot up in the yeah. bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Donnie, can I get in? Yeah. There's a card for that. Just tell us you're going to do it. <laughs> 
But yeah, we ended up uh, number one. That was a great show. You had amazing bands that played. There was a, uh, the one that sticks out. There was a dude that I met. I was talking with, and you said you knew him for a bunch of years. Yep. He came out with like potty mouth. Potty mouth. He came yep. out with a huge like foam head. That's Jason Basha. He was in Green Jelly for a minute too. Oh really? Yeah, he was a guitar player for Green Jelly. Dude, that guy was awesome. Because I just remember like talking to him for a while, and we were talking music. We were talking a bunch of other shit, and. And all of a sudden, like 10 minutes later, I see him come out with, I was like, is that the same guy I was just talking <laughs> yeah. to? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, actually, like, I actually met him uh, when Soar moved out to LA for our first record deal type thing. Mm -hmm. He was out at the studio we worked at. Zach Wild was out there. Like he knew Zach Wild and all those guys. Yeah. And uh, I met him and I met a couple other guys that I still talk to this day. That's from 2005, 2006 out there. But yeah. Dude, it's amazing how long you can keep friends, like especially in the music industry. Like... I, I kind of got into it with Brandon yesterday. Um, I was like, dude, I'm like, I've known Donnie since I was 17. Yeah. I was like, I was like, fuck. I was like, when I was, so him and I have kind of a similar background. I don't know if you remember this or not. We had a TV studio in our high school. I, I do kind of remember this a little so bit. So yeah. when I was like, I had projects I had to do. Like we had all these different, pro like he had to do like these indie films and shit like that. Yeah. The shit that I did was documentaries and interviews and shit like that. So one of the first docs I ever did was on your first band, Reverend Epicurean. <laughs> I kind of remember it like sitting down at a like bar with you. Oh God, I hope you don't <laughs> have that shit anymore. You know what? It, it was in a Rubbermaid container. So... I hope it got destroyed. No, so it's. I, I hope not. I it, remember. I do remember that. When it's, you... it's on VHS, so we'd have to a find a VHS player. Yeah, yeah. just go to figure, any Goodwill. Yeah, try and figure out how to hook that shit up to our TVs. Not none of those components are yeah. even there anymore. Yeah. But I had I had some great interviews from back in the day. Like I remember I interviewed almost every band that came through the rave. Like I had interviews with Garbage. I had interviews. Oh, that'd be with, cool to see that shit. So I ended up the Steve Marker. Um, butch vig interview i ended up talking like i talked about garbage it was their second album tour yeah i talked with i talked with them about their music a little bit and then i ended up going in i ended up nerding out and just talking like studio shit with them and i was like so it was like recording the nevermind record <laughs> and they're like that's that has nothing to do with garbage i was like i don't give a shit yeah we're, we're talking about this <laughs> i was like i'm probably never gonna be able to talk to you guys again so well, i fuck it let's just <laughs> yeah i was like what are you guys going to do? Kick me out of this yeah, interview? Yeah. Well, they, they can, yeah. But. I'm like, listen, you're dealing with a teenage fanboy. Just fucking yeah, deal with yeah, it, man. Yeah. Do you still have those Nirvana guitars there? Yeah. No, it's, no, I've heard. I've heard stories that like Kurt gave them a bunch of guitars That's and awesome. shit like that. And I was like, fucking hell. But no, they uh, they ended up referring me to um, my first digital audio workstation. Um, Acid Pro was a Madison or Acid was a Madison based company. Yeah. And they were giving out demos online. And they're like, yeah, they're like, if you like music, like check this out. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. That's how that's how all this started. Started. Yeah. Was just me playing around on acid and, and writing music and shit like that. Um But yeah, going back to what I was saying, dude, it's amazing on how long you can have friends in this industry. There's guys I've worked with. That's because it's like a brother or it's brother and sisterhood, you know what I mean? Like uh musicians and entertainers, we we all live off the same fucked up brain type thing you know what i mean we you have to be a little fucked up to be an entertainer yeah i, I would like to say it's probably like the same we're all members of the same shitty fraternity we've yeah. all been dicked over by promoters <laughs> yep club yep. owners yep so it's easy to relate to everyone absolutely but yeah a longest longest friends i've had you uh dj e rich kyle 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 who i've known since i was thinking about this the other day i'm like him and i've been friends since middle school He's, I want, he's killing it too. Like he's mixing a lot of big uh, artist uh, stuff now between Force Five and like I, I since I know so so many people, they're like, hey, who recorded that for you? And I'm referring him, and he's doing really well with Mad Science. Audio. Check out Mad Science Audio Labs, Kyle Krukowski. No, I want to have him on here separately. I thought about having you guys on together, and I yeah. was like, no, I was like, for the amount of stuff that Kyle knows and the the amount of stuff that I can cover with him, mm -hmm. I was like, that can be its own podcast on its yep. own. Yep. And besides that, like me trying to do. I've tried to do it with a three man booth, like with the band Tenlo, it worked because they're yeah. both members of the same, same band. Yep. And I and I've kind of figured out that I'm like, okay, I'm like, I can have one on one conversations that kind of work better. So yeah, I think I'm gonna probably either do that for May or June and just be like, just have them on separately and just talk to him about everything that he's mm -hmm. been doing. But no, more than anything, I want to catch up with him. Yeah. And I mean, just being, I just want to be like, dude, come by like two hours before the podcast, yeah. like. <laughs> I, I got some issues I need you to help me work out on my computer. <laughs> but, um, oh, excuse me. 
But yeah, I definitely want to have him on. And the dude's just been killing it too mm-hmm. for like solid for the last ten years out yep. of his out of his house studio. Yep. Um, so as far as music with Kyle goes, what are you currently working on? I know you recently put out um, the Ruckus mixtape. Ruckus mixtape volume two. Yeah. Hell's yeah! All the Force Five crew: uh, Danny Diablo, Big yeah. Left, me, uh, King Relic, Jason Logic, Prolific. Um, uh, not any last words went on this one. Um, yeah, every, everyone from Force Five that was while we were recording this, we just released that. Um, <clears throat> we really uh, we we've been real busy. Jason Logic released his album Soundcheck in January. Um, we released a couple singles with Any Last Words and signed them in February. Uh, we've been working on the Scarhead record. We've been working on the Big Left record. If anyone's familiar, like Big Left was in La Coca Nostra with Everlast, uh, Danny Boy, Slain, Ill Bill. Uh, Danny Diablo's like the king of New York hardcore. He's all his projects come out through the label. Finishing up the Saint Dog record for it. It's a split between Suburban Noise Records and Force Five. It's the last Saint Dog just passed away in October of last year. So we got a bunch of demos and remixes and some original songs that we're putting out. And his his kid's actually gonna be on it. So oh, I'm nice. super stoked about that. Um finish uh, finishing up some DRP stuff. I mean, it's nonstop, you know what I mean? Like I I'm working on shit for Suburban Noise besides all this, so so it's a lot. Hey, I do have to ask about this because I remember talking to you about it because I, I had inboxed you when it was kind of going on. Uh, Danny got into it with not Chris Brown, the rapper, but Chris Brown, the from, vocalist from Trapped. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Boo. No, but uh, so he got into it with him. How did that start? Okay, so basically, I, I'm not going to say quote me on everything, but uh, Chris Brown was running. His mouth. You saw all the the posts and stuff. He was, yeah. he was just running his mouth. Yeah, fine, freedom of speech, whatever. But he's got. A, I think he should have just relaxed on some of that dumb shit he was saying. But then he got into it with Ice T and said, "Well, let's compare record sales." One, Ice T is a fucking icon. Your name is Chris Brown from Trapped. Yeah, Ice T, Chris Brown. Who who's gonna be remembered in the end for music? <laughs> one of the innovators of hip hop and one of the greatest like thrash punk bands in body count. And he's also been on SVU for 22 fucking seasons or Chris Brown from Trap. So you're going to try to have a pissing contest with Ice-T. One, that's stupid as fuck. Former pimp, smart as fuck. Give me a break. So then all Danny, Danny chimed in because Ice-T and Danny are good friends. Yeah. Actually, last month on Fox News, check out the New York Hardcore Streetwear. Ice-T rocked this on Fox News for us. Oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, and he's like, check out New York Hardcore Streetwear. Go to force5records.com. Danny Diablo merch. <laughs> Randy, <laughs> and if you're able to, put a plug on that too. Yeah. Do, if but, you can build the graphic quick. But basically, I mean, uh, Danny was like, yo, what the fuck are you doing talking shit about Ice-T? So then Chris went off on Danny, didn't realize who he was, and said, you look like a tattooed meth head, you ain't shit, blah, blah, blah. And everyone in the hardcore world and hip-hop was like, yo, do you know who you're talking to? Like, I'm not going to say, but I'm going to say, Danny... It's got a lot of connections. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and Danny is not one to like cross. So when Chris started running his mouth, it just blew up on on the Twitterverse. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, I mean, we ran with it and just started fucking talking shit to him. I actually tried to call. Uh, I I wrote to him like, "Yo, why are you saying this? Why you know it's stupid? Like, just squash it. Like, don't talk shit about Ice T or Chris. Yeah. I mean, or, or uh, Danny." And he just ran his mouth to me. I'm like, well, what the fuck? This guy's just like obviously unhinged. Like I'm trying to have like a logical thing with him. So I was like, fuck it, whatever. And I'll tell you what, our uh, numbers went through the roof when that happened. Man. <laughs> <laughs> we sold so much merch. There's no such thing as bad publicity. Yeah, so, especially yeah. like when you're on the winning side of I, it. I actually had a few people that were like acquaintances and friends in, in music like go, yo, you're just you're just uh, trying to be chasing for clout. I'm like we're doing what we're supposed to do as businessmen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like musicians suffer. We go up and down all the time. If that gave us, I mean, it was in Rolling Stone covered it. Uh, Blabbermouth covered it. PRP, like all those big, comp- like they covered everything. They were showing like videos on force five. Like we were killing it. You know yeah. what I mean? So I'm like, well, fuck it. Of course I'm going to run with them. I'm going to say, shut the- Rolling Stone. Take that off, please. Yeah. They- I-, I don't want that clout chasing bullshit. Give me a fucking break. Yeah. Make money. Yeah. Um, I remember I had hit you up and, he was like oh we can fight blah 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 and i was like i was like donnie i was like this is your chance i was like you tell him to come to milwaukee i did i tried man i'll train him i'm like i'll work with him like what are we gonna do here we can do boxing we can do kickboxing we can do mma chris brown of trapped if you want to fight danny we've got the ufc connection over here (laughs) uh, we we, can make something happen for charity let's do it danny's ready 
Well, here's the thing. He got kicked out of his band like a couple of months ago. They like Trap released a, a statement because he. Wait, doesn't he own the rights to the band? He got banned from Twitter. I saw that. And which then, is, by the way, that's bullshit. It is. I, I'm gonna side with him there. I I, I believe freedom of speech. I, I don't think you should be able to. You and I are on the same page. Yeah. Um, I it's a balancing act for me. Yeah. Because I look at it like this: <clears throat> social media, they mm-hmm. are still a private entity, and they can they can write whatever rules that they want. Yes. But when at what point when you become a level of communication that on one end of the spectrum they helped what was it 2012 or 2013 they helped Egypt with their uh, I think they pushed out a uh, not a democrat <laughs> a dictator mm-hmm. um you know you help on one end of the spectrum so you have freedom of speech that way mm-hmm. but on the other end when it's speech that you don't like or you don't agree with then you shut it down so then it's well what are you then are mm-hmm. are you a company or are you like the telephone company where a telephone company doesn't regulate the message that's said on it. Yeah. It, it regulates the connection. So at what point do you make this a utility then? Why Why don't the, the social media companies do this? Because we're such a divided nation, right? No one can get along. There should be, why don't they do this? Whoever runs Twitter, I don't know. This, I'm making this as simplistic as Jack possible. Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey, right. pay attention. Okay. Why don't they have people from Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians on a 12 seat forum and they decide who should get kicked off and who shouldn't, right? And it's 444 four, four, or whatever. Mm-hmm. So that way there's some equality there to it. You can argue here. I'll I'll tell you what that that counter argument's going to be. Okay. Is that there's going to be someone that goes there isn't enough Mexicans re- representative, there's not enough white people, there's not enough Asian people, there's not enough trans people, there's not enough gay people that everything has to be completely equal. Then this is what we'll do. We're going to write the <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be 20 people on this thing. We're going to go to every single part of this. Actually, make it 500 because I'm sure there's 30 <laughs> genders now, whatever it is. I'm not making fun of you guys. I promise. I, I mean that. I, I joke around about everything. We have every gender on there, every nationality on there, represented by one. Even white. There's only one white motherfucker on there, right? There's one black guy. There's one Asian. There's one. Uh, we got to have a mix, too, then. Yeah. This is going to take a while. Jack Dorsey, let's talk. We'll get this figured out. <laughs> and then they have votes when, like, like, guys like Trump. You know, Ron Paul got kicked off. Really? Yeah. And all he did was say, was it Ron? Yeah, Ron Paul, yeah, Ron Paul is libertarian, right? Oh, you're thinking of Rand Paul. Rand Paul. Yeah, uh, yeah libertarian. He got kicked off because all he said is Trump. I I don't I don't believe what Trump says, but I believe he has the freedom of speech to say it on Twitter. And he got kicked off, and he's the most down the middle motherfucker you can have. Well, that's that's the problem with all this shit now is that, uh, how do I explain this? There, people bear down so hard, they curl their toes into the sand yeah. so hard, and they bear down so hard the second that there's any. Like if you challenge anything that yeah. ha- that has to do with their belief, with their identity, that they're just like, no, you're wrong, and I can't hear it. Where when you and I were growing up, we could have different opinion, difference of opinion. Yeah. Like it'd be like, no, Jay Z's the greatest rapper. You're like, no, dog, DMX is the greatest rapper. I was gonna do the bark, but I don't want to destroy your. <laughs> I don't know how loud it gets. <laughs> you blow up my eardrums. Yeah. I have, so I have my I have these high just so that I talk normally. Yeah. Because otherwise, I'm trying to like bring my volume up yeah. more so but um you and i could have this argument and mm-hmm. it, that that could be a heated argument with us yeah. back in the 90s yeah but at the end of it we're like fuck it let's go shotgun some yeah. beers and blah 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 yeah and we would agree to disagree yeah we're now everyone's like see i'm st- i'm still like this though like i could talk to anybody and even if i don't like agree with them 100 i'm gonna listen to what they have to say because everyone wants to be listened to you know what i mean like you can't just talk over people with shit like that you know what i mean yeah like I hate Nickelback. I have to hear it sometimes. And someone has, someone tells me sometimes they like, they're like, this is my favorite band. I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I hate them. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Uh, well, let's have a drink. <laughs> Dude, if you didn't hate them to begin with, the fact that Chad Kroger, Kroger married Avril Levine makes me hate him even more. Uh, uh, wait, like, are they still married? I hope not. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Avril, if you're out there, let us know what the update is. <laughs> yeah. But, um, where the fuck were we going with all this? I know we went to politics. God damn it. Let's talk music. And it always, dude, it always fucking uh. happens. Here, we'll talk about, yeah, we were talking about this a little bit off air. I'm slowly getting back into DJing. It, I felt 
rusty as fuck playing yeah. last week. But, but how how was the crowd and stuff like that? Was so it? crowds not great. Yeah, because uh, people are scared to go back out. Yeah, and people, you know what I mean. It's well, number one in Milwaukee, we're dealing with capacity issues. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. With the way those COVID plans are written out, there's a certain capacity that those people can have uh, with the square footage that they have in this venue. So um, let's say Brothers has a capacity of like 600. Well, they're capped at like 320 now Mm -hmm. because of restrictions of how many people they can have in there and, and so on and so forth. And the fact that you can't, I'm, I think I'm paraphrasing, paraphrasing these rules. You can't be drinking on a quote unquote dance floor. So yeah, for a while there there was no dance floors. And then it was now you can just wear just a mask. Just get them on a table. Yeah. Now <laughs> now you gotta wear a mask and and stuff like Wait, that. On the dance floor you gotta wear a mask? Yeah. So there's only like there's only like thirty or forty kids that go out there. Like, where's my where's my phone? Yeah. I'll pull out the photos. Yeah. But uh when they first opened, it was wall to wall in there. And it's you know how it is where you just got like nothing but great energy off a crowd. Yeah. And I would play and I was like, God damn. I was like, this is so much fun. Like I came back and played like a week later. And what is this from October? That's November. It was October when I played there. But, um, Oh, here it is, dude. This is from last weekend. No, this is from right before they changed the lockdown rules. Oh shit. Yeah. So that's the size of the crowd. Yeah. Look at that. That's a fucking madhouse in there. Yeah. COVID, COVID, COVID. I'm just <laughs> Dude, the, so my girl showed up and the line was down the fucking Holy block. Fuck. But yeah, that's like, that's what I was used to is that just like a packed house. Yeah. You know, everyone getting into what you're doing. And it's so hard to play when there's like 10 people and all they're doing is that's... this the entire time. Really? It's so fucking annoying. So yeah, I'm hoping that by they're like I'm out and about, check it out. Yeah, no mask. <laughs> but um, I'm like, please don't tag us where you're at. Uh, but yeah, it's it, it's hard to play. It, it's like playing an acoustic show, man. Like there's just no yeah. energy there. Yeah. I'm hoping by summertime we kind of move back into normal. I hate to tell you this, but I probably played a thousand clubs to ten people. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of the underground uh, vibe. <laughs> Not even an acoustic. <laughs> I'd probably get more an acoustic sometimes. <laughs> the DRP plays acoustic. 20 people. Holy fuck. <laughs> but yeah, I'm hoping I'm hoping by summertime that this all gets back to normal. Um, are you pre-planning stuff? I know you're doing the, the show down in Texas. By the way, time yep. out. Uh, Lancaster, Texas, yep. 420 show. You can check out DRP. And the Force 5 crew. Who else is playing on that show? Uh, well, Razakel and the Slice Girls are the headliner. They're good friends of ours in Texas. And then it's um, there's a whole bunch of other bands from down in Texas. Uh, and then uh, it's me, Prolific, King Relic, Rick Dog, and Jason Logic. We're heading down there. We were actually supposed to play a show the next night, but the show got postponed due to COVID. It's a, it's a really big show, and I can't really announce it yet because it's being rescheduled. But it's one of my favorite groups of all time that we're supposed to be playing with down there. So it, we were bummed that we couldn't do it this time. But with COVID, we kind of understood it was a crapshoot. Mm-hmm. But thank God Razakel and, and her team from uh, She Entertainment, she's like, hey, we're, we're playing uh, while you guys are down here. Can, you want to do this show? So she kind of helped us out a lot. So we're, we're going on there. We're going to fucking party. I, I got a bunch of uh, T-shirts. We're just going to throw them out, CDs, boom. Just just party for two days. Yeah, I gotta give a shout out to King Relic. I know he had posted about about the podcast and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. I met him at Highbury, man, six or seven years ago. Oh, really? And it was just he had the tattoo shop. I yep. think that was connected to it. And uh, he ended up he was drinking with Joe Katz, and we're we're he inter- Joe always introduces me to like people. He's like Parker. He's like, do you know? I don't know what King Relic's real name is. William. He, he like, he's like, do you know William? And I was like, I, I no. He's like, he's like. You guys would get together. He does music and shit like that. And I ended up giving him a ride back to South Milwaukee at some point. And we were rapping in the car about music and shit like that. But yeah. uh, still remember you, brother. Nice hanging out with you. <laughs> um, what the fuck was I going with this before? Uh, oh. We're talking about Texas. Shows. Oh, yeah, Texas. Yeah. So with uh, with Texas then, uh, you'd said something about moving the show. Okay, yeah. I remember where I was going with this now. So along with the Texas show, are you pre-planning shows already or are you just kind of waiting for restrictions to get lifted? I've been, I've been, we've been waiting for restrictions a little bit to get lifted, but we've been talking, 
even between Force Five and like Suburban Noise Records, they're trying to figure out tour dates for all their guys. Mm-hmm. So th- there's been a few things that have been popping up. Um, I-, I talked to Danny Diablo today. I'm like, hey, we really got to get a tour going soon. But I was like, are you worried about shit? Right before the pandemic hit, we were supposed to have a Crown of Thorns, which is Danny Diablo's band, um, Sick of It All, and um, um, Agnostic Front were supposed to go on the road. And it was this big tour, and it's been rescheduled three times. So we're hoping it gets rescheduled here for fall now. That'll Hopefully we get that one out there. And then I'm going to plan one with Danny and me. Uh, Head PE is going on the road, look like July. So hopefully that happens for Suburban Noise. A lot of the other artists there that I work with, uh, they're, they're planning things. So everyone's kind of like putting their toe in the water. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, it's getting warmer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I might jump in. <laughs> so you, you keep making references back to Suburban Noise. Now, yeah. are you a f- like, so is that like one of those deals where, for example, the the best way I can describe this in my head is that there was Interscope, and then there would be like an artist, an artist uh, record label. Are you with them? Are they doing distribution for you, or how does that work? It basically varies by project, but like I I work for Suburban Noise as as an entity by itself. Like I do a lot of um, marketing, uh, music. You know what I mean? Like I, I work a lot with them just as Suburban Noise. But Kevin Zinger, the owner of Suburban Noise SRH Productions, he. Uh, he, he, he digs everything I'm doing. He's like, hey, what do you got going on? Like the Saint Dog record is going to be a sub noise release with Force 5. Um, Scarhead, we're talking about it. We'll see. You know, it's, nothing's come to fruition. The new Saint, uh, the le- old Saint Dog record was. I So I, I go back and forth with both. But yeah, Force 5 is kind of like, we'll, we'll call it the minor league system for suburban noise okay. at, at times. You know what I mean? Like it's still its own entity, but Kevin's been so gracious with me with everything. Like, Whenever I have an idea, he's like, yeah, I think I can run with that. You know what I mean? But Zinger is such a busy dude. Like, he, he owns, like, four different record labels besides the Suburban Noise. Like, he's got so much on his plate. You know what I mean? So he's got all these different people that work around him. But the, the dude's nonstop from morning to night. And you never know when you I, – I'm two hours behind him. He, he'll send something at 2 in the morning, California time. It's 4. I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm going to have to get to this when I wake up in a couple <laughs> hours. But he's nonstop. He's, I've never met – a harder grinder in my life than him so how did that come about then so was it just one of those that you guys had linked up and basically for years i was booking x i worked at the rave for a while mm-hmm. so I, I got familiar with how to book tours and stuff like that so i got to meet people and i met a lot of the artists from suburban noise records back in the day d gaff chucky chuck potluck um head pe you know all those guys so i started setting up shows even mini shows like weekends and then it turned into bigger tours and bigger tours and Kevin knew me from uh, Gillies from DGAF. They're good friends. And he's like, yo, Kevin, you should check Donnie out. He's, he's working hard. So we've known him. But I, you know, I've known him forever because he's huge. Like, uh, I, I, I wish I could be the Kevin Zinger of Milwaukee. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, so a couple years ago, I, I approached him. I'm like, hey, I got the St. Dog record. It's almost done. Would you be interested in partnering with me? Because I, I think you could help me make it even bigger. And he's like, yeah. And from there, it's just worked into He's like, hey, do you want to work for Suburban Noise? I'm like, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking brilliant. Yeah. So I didn't realize that you had worked for the rave as well. So were you booking or were you doing promotions? Like how, how did your, that work out for you? It was a little bit of everything. First, I worked in the fucking flyer room, stapling flyers together. And I was uh, booking shows for sore through them. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, so I, it was my way to get a foot in the door with uh, the rave. And then I got became friends with everyone and we get on all the bigger shows there. And then it turned into, hey, do you want to be the st- uh, assistant stage manager? And I would stage manage. And then it was, hey, do you want to interview a bunch of these bands? And I interviewed all those bands back in the day. And then it, it just developed from there. You know what I mean? And then Joel Balistrieri, the owner, uh, he taught me. He did. He'd show me things like, this is how you do this. This is how you do this. And then Justin Morales, he got in there and, you know, he helped me with a, a ton of things too. So I just got to know everybody who was networking. You know what oh, I mean? okay. Nice, man. Yeah. I actually, we were talking about this off air. Um, one, one of the only shows I ever got to do at the rave was because of you. Which, oh, so, yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah. With the Reverend Epicurean. So I, I wish I, I knew what show it was for. So I, I so here's here's the crazy part about that. I had a friend of mine who filmed it. His name was uh, John De La Cruz. He's a friend of mine through, he was a friend of mine in high school. He's now a friend of mine through jujitsu. Yeah. And one of the first things I did when I saw him, I was like, dude, I'm like, I've been looking for you for like 15 years. I was like, you filmed. You're looking for on social media? <laughs> like he had, he, like, he's a nomad, dude. Oh, he, he went all over the place. He was yeah. living in Arizona and shit like that. And then yeah. he eventually moved back to Milwaukee. 
And I was like, yo, man, I was like, you have the only video of like me playing at the rave. I was like, do you still have it? He's like, oh, man, I recorded over it when I <laughs> when I graduated from the Navy. I was like, you fucking cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> but um, going back to what I was saying, the, yeah. o- the only time I ever got to play the rave bar was because of you. Yeah, it was because Reverend Epicurean had bassist who's a longtime friend of ours. Yeah. Dan Wooten yep. was just done with it and he didn't want to do it, do it anymore. And you guys were like, oh, we got to cancel this show. And I was like. I was managing you guys at the time, yeah. and I was like, we're not canceling this That's show. That's funny. You were managing us at 17. I was like 21 at the time. <laughs> yeah. It just gotta, made, it made sense. Like, Parker's kind of professional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if, you know, someone doesn't want to pay actually, us. Actually, no. Uh, I was 17. We're, how old are you? Don't say how old you are. I don't want, <laughs> I don't want anyone to figure out how old I am. No, everyone, I, I just talked about the fact that my, my 40th birthday was last oh, week. Fuck. Which, by the way, everyone who hit me up on Facebook and emailed and texted and phone called and FaceTime me. Thank you very much. Uh, my good friend Bobby from Champions always calls me every year and, and sings me happy birthday at my <laughs> voicemail. So it's always one of those that I wake up to it where I'm like, oh, I got a, I got a voicemail message from Bobby. And it's happy birthday. <laughs> Hopefully he's really drunk. I, if it's a sober happy birthday, I'm, I'd be like, nope, delete. No, I, I guarantee it, Bobby's always got a couple. Yeah, he's always had a, a, a few in him. All right, good, good. I but, like this guy already. Yeah. Well, you know what? Maybe we'll, we'll swing by and go. We'll go say hi to Bobby. <laughs> yeah. He's always he's always tells me he's tuning into the podcast every time we do it. So yeah. I gotta get over there and wish him happy birthday as well. But um, yeah. Going back to what I was saying, learned bass in like I think four hours and then played that show. That shows how complex our songs were back in the day. <laughs> yeah, they were. <laughs> I was like, this is it. Yeah. I was like, all right. <laughs> It's a different time. It was a simpler time. <laughs> yeah. And then we had also talked about off air um, with the recent passing of, of DMX that there is a cover of the Rough Riders anthem that you did with that band. Yep. That I literally pulled out a couple. Of, I found it in a box. And I and, hope it never resurfaces because there's way yeah. too many N words that I shouldn't be saying on that one. <laughs> I still cover that song now on my sets. Yeah. But I changed. If anyone knows Rough Riders anthem, let's, what, read the lyrics to it. Go check out the lyrics and then come back and be like, this motherfucker rap this word for word like back in the day I did. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> but yeah, I found that and I was just like, I was like, God damn, dude. Uh, that will never, the audio will never see the light of day. That's that's sitting somewhere upstairs in my room. Yeah. But um, but yeah, dude, all that stuff back in the day was such a blast, dude. And I, I still think it's funny that like, dude, I was 17 representing you. And I, it was like, well, Parker's professional. And <laughs> if someone doesn't want to pay us, we'll just, you know, we'll give them a couple of jolt coals and just be like, go get their ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just head down, just give us our fucking money. <laughs> yeah. Do you, you know what? Now that I think about it, whatever happened to the the guy that managed you guys after me, because I left and I he started radio. Lives in Vegas. He's doing well. He's uh, selling homes out there. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. I I didn't like that guy when I left. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I butted heads with him. I'm like, I'm gonna beat your ass before I fucking leave, dude. I'm yeah, like, that I'm about was to the move transition it. from Reverend Epicurean to. Are you talking about that uh, from to Soar? Yeah, that was Nigel. Yeah, right? Nigel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just remember I was I was like leaving. I was like, I do not want to leave this band and this dude's fucking. Yeah. Hand. Uh, uh, Nigel, if you're out there, you owe me a lot of drinks. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, dude, it, it's crazy. You know, looking back at the last fuck, the last bunch of years mm. of all the homies that we've worked with, so on and so forth, and dude, you know what? And still seeing you doing this is amazing. Yeah. Um, and still grinding, doing Force Five and and working with Suburban Noise, doing the mixtapes on and so forth. This is just fucking awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. And actually, if anyone's into thrash or punk, I'm in a band called. Well, you said MOD yeah, Classic. Yeah. We just released our first single. Our drummer is from DRI, the original drummer from DRI, Dirty Rotten Imbeciles, Felix Griffin, and then uh, the original uh, rhythm section from USA for MOD, uh, Tim McMurtry and Kenny Ballone. Our our first album with Combat Records is coming out. I, I can't give a release date yet, but it's just about worked up and uh, finished the mixing part of it. So we're going to work on the marketing part soon. So what was the other label that you're working with on that one? Combat Records. Combat Records. Yep. Now, how did you come about with working with Combat? So Tom Hazard, who runs Combat Records with Dave Ellison, uh, Tom Hazard used to manage my old band, Primer 55. Mm-hmm. If anyone remembers, like, the new metal from the 2000s, Primer 55 was on Island Def Jam Records. Um, so he managed us after when, when I joined the band. Now, people say, oh, you were in Primer 55 in 2000? No, that was Jason. He was the original singer. He was the most badass singer on the planet. He, he passed away a few years ago. A lot of people think I had like beef with him. I, me and Jason talked all the time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So 
uh, we both we both uh, battled drug addiction, so we, we had something in common. We talked about it all the time. So Primer 55 is Jason, but I was in Primer 55. So when people are like, why do you bring that up? Like, I, it was five years of my life. You know what I mean? Mm. I, I never tried to replace Jason, but there's some weird beef with that with people like the fans. Like, I... I loved Primer 55 as a fan, and, and I was in the band for a while, so it, it's still a part of me, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it always will be, but Jason is Primer 55. Anyways, I went off on a tangent. What no, were we no, talking no. about? Yeah. Um, we were talking about Combat Records. Combat Records. Uh, so Tom Hazard used to manage Primer 55 when I was in the band, and then he uh, teamed up with Dave Ellison from Megadeth to start Combat Records, and so we all know the kind of the same people. He's He put together a deal for us, so we're working on this first record with, with them, so... I work closely with Tom. Uh, Dave Ellison I do a lot of stuff for, too. It's, it's it's a trip because Megadeth is one of my favorite bands. And I have Dave Ellison email me like, hey, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh, shit, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I, saw, I saw Megadeth a bunch of years ago. Actually, at the rave. Um, this lineup was fucking sick. It was Volbeat opened. Yeah. Oh, um, they opened. They opened. Yeah. Um, not Mudvayne. Um, Motorhead, sorry. Motorhead. Who played so ungodly? Like it's no joke. It's the loudest concert I've ever heard in my life. My ears are ringing now thinking about those shows. So it was me, my friend PJ from Wausau, and he brought two two of his staffers down with him. And the girls thought it was so loud that they were tearing money in <laughs> half, rolling it up, <laughs> and putting it in their ears. Yeah, like I was screaming as loud as I could to order a beer, and they're like. What? The two loudest shows, well, actually, the three most loud shows is always Motorhead, Motorhead Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> Motorhead's one and two on every list. I swear to God. It's, and they're a three, they were a three-piece. It yeah. was so ungodly, but I loved it. Oh, dude. I don't know if I could do it. If I was like 70, I don't know if I'd go to a Motorhead show, but yeah. uh, let me. Rest in peace, brother. Yeah, and then Megadeth was the headliner on that one. And it was I, I felt bad because it was one of those that after Motorhead played, Megadeth seemed so quiet. quiet? And yeah. I was just like. Something feels That's off. a great fucking show, though. I mean, yeah, it was amazing. It was yeah. the first time I actually got to see Megadeth, too. Yeah. But, yeah, Volbeat, uh, Motor, Motorhead, and Megadeth was just I have a funny Lemmy story. Go for it. All right. All right. I got a million stories, so if I go off on a tangent, mm. I'm sorry. Tell all the stories you so, want. Time out. Before we go even further, um, we're going to go in stories with Lemmy. Number one, I want to give a shout out to this because I think this is just fucking amazing, is that if you can, Randy, you get in, a, get in this well? Force 5 Records has their own rolling papers. Ruckus Raps. The Ruckus Raps. <laughs> you should do you should do those for uh for condoms too, the Ruckus Raps. <laughs> when you're down to make the ruckus. Anyone on that ru- listens to Force 5 will look at that condom and go, "Nope." <laughs> <laughs> those are just sit in the warehouse. <laughs> uh, all right, hold on. Uh, one other thing I totally forgot about that I wanted to plug as well. Um next week Saturday, uh Jake Paul, Ben Askren fight. Um, I'm not going to be able to host, host this, but the hosting site will be Uncle Bucks over on Old World 3rd Street. There will be some specials that we're putting together. I'm talking with uh, Ricardo from Uncle Bucks tomorrow. So uh, if you're looking to see the Jake Paul, Ben Askren fight next Saturday, you want to go to Uncle Bucks. The top two floors are going to be dedicated just to the fights. There's about 80 seats available. So come early. Uh, ben Askren is from wisconsin he's an olympic wrestler who's gonna be boxing jake paul who is utterly fucking annoying i was gonna say it's the ben Askren jake paul fight don't put jake paul first fuck that time out <laughs> we're gonna get to your story in a second <laughs> right. but ben said one of the funniest fucking lines and i think it went over everyone's fucking head during that press conference well he was what, punking jake paul pretty good like dude he we- said flat out he goes jake if this was a real fight he goes i'd fucking kill you he's yeah. like He's like, you wouldn't have a fucking chance. He goes, yeah. I would ragdoll you in the back alley. Yeah. He's like, I would pick you up, beat the shit out of you. He goes, we're going with my weakest aspect. And he goes, and I'm still going to kick your ass. <laughs> he goes, understand. He goes, I'm boxing right now. But in a real fight, he goes, I'd fucking kill you. Yeah. He's like, so shut the fuck up. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> and, but and I'll tell you this. Jake Paul knows how to like uh, get in there and get under people and market himself. And, and that's the thing. Get your money. Get yeah, your money. Yeah. And yeah, what, same thing we were saying about the Chris yep. Brown thing. Yep. Get your fucking money, dude. I can't hate him there. And, and, and that's the thing is that, you know, as much as people don't like him, he's making money off the fact that people don't like him. People aren't paying to see him box. Yeah. People are are paying to Please see him. Please punch that motherfucker out. But he's so fucking annoying. 
please beat his ass. Yeah. And, and if you're making money off of that and you can take that and you're cool with it, yeah. do good for you. Yeah. If you can be that hated and 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 make money off of it, great. He Chris will all- Brown versus Jake Paul. Ooh. You know, who would you root, root for? God, that there's got to be a villain in that. You know, here's the thing. You ever if Jake Paul, if you're watching, Danny Diablo comes in and smashes them both, <laughs> brings out a table and the Hardy Boys and just beats the shit out of everyone, and then becomes a win for Danny Diablo, yeah. and then he takes everyone's purse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, you know, in a in a Chris Brown, Jake Paul fight, I think Chris Brown is so hated. Yeah, <laughs> that Jake Paul actually comes out the hero on that one. Uh, yeah, that's crazy, right? Yeah, well, I mean, Chris Brown jumped on. And so for the record here, we are talking about Chris Brown from the band Trapped, not the R&B singer. Which who can do he's, stand- he's had his moments, too, of... Uh, that came up recently. Did it? Where someone was just like... Sorry, we go off on a tangent. I didn't even smoke weed. <laughs> I feel like we're running on tangents. No, dude, I'm ADD as fuck. So have, we'll, I, we'll start bad. here and we'll end over there. We're not a well. We're good for conversation, yeah. but it's gonna go everywhere. Everyone's like, "Will you guys stay on one fucking topic?" <laughs> yeah, task at hand. <laughs> no, as far as the, the, I brought this up the other day, where I was like, I didn't play Chris Brown for like a good six years because I was like, I took Rihanna's side on that. Now one. I was gonna say he's not talking about trapped at the DJ booth. He's yeah. talking about Chris Brown, the R and B singer. Yeah, I didn't play like up until I think that happened, and then he did a track with Bang Benazi. I think there was like four or five years that went by, and I finally like. I we think did it was that track a, with Lil Dicky. That's a pretty dope track. That was a dope track, dude. <laughs> yeah. the, I mean, I will say this, man. The dude makes some hits, dude. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just, I'm like, dude, I'm like, stay out of the fucking news. Like, stop kidnapping people. <laughs> stop fucking smacking girls up. Please. I I got used to playing your records again. Stop. <laughs> yeah, stop. Yeah. Stop fucking up. Don't be like R. Kelly, dude. Yeah. Fucking nasty ass. Dude. <laughs> mm. So we're going to circle back. Yeah. Um, Lemmy, Motorhead. Lemmy, Motorhead. All right. So uh, when I first moved to L.A., um, I used to go to the, the Rainbow Room all the time. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with the Rainbow Room? Bar and Grill, yeah. yeah. Off the of Sunset, right? Yes. One of the most iconic, like, 80s. Every, anyone, I'll, I'll give you a hint. If if you go to L.A. and you want to go to the Rainbow Room to, like, see people or on Sunset, don't go on a weekend. They, that's the tourist time. The locals come out on Sundays, Mondays, Tuesdays. It's nothing but it's crazy i ran into andy dick there i ran into cypress hill there i ran into uh cory taylor there ran a search tankian um fucking in sync was there like i i ran into people all i would go sunday through tuesday and i just networked with people but lemmy was always when he wasn't on tour he was always there he was playing in the back uh his machines he loved mm-hmm. playing his machines and would just have a beer and me being from milwaukee when I went there, I'm like, where's the beer? Let's drink. Woo! Just fucking. And everyone else is like doing a bunch of designer drugs and shit. So <laughs> <laughs> Lemmy would get a kick out of me and he'd laugh because I would always be yelling, ruckus and all this stupid shit. And I remember one time <laughs> I was I was pretty fucked up. And uh, I was like, ah, bartender, I need a Heineken. And she's like, you're cut off. And I said, what? I'm cut off? I was like, why? She's like, you're running around yelling. She's like, I can't have that. And then Lemmy's, Lemmy's like, whatever her name is, like Heather or whatever. He's like, come here. And I see him talking to her. And I'm sitting on the other side of the bar. And she's like, Ugh. She comes walking over with a Heineken. She's like, Lemmy bought you one. <laughs> and I was like, yes, Lemmy just bought me a drink. And I went over to Lemmy. And I, I, I was like, Lemmy, thank you so much. He's like, cheers, Meg. You know how to party. <laughs> I will remember that story to the day I die. She, the bartender, was so pissed that she couldn't cut me off. <laughs> Just, uh, mm-hmm. she, drink. she was the jet. She was like, she was like this. Let me bought you this. <laughs> wait, wait, time out. Do you need another yes, one? Yes. Hey, Randon, can you do me a favor? Can you run and grab another white claw for Captain Claw over here? <laughs> Thank and you whiskey. So much. No, I'm just kidding. Well, there's a Japanese whiskey over there too. Japanese whiskey. Brandon, you want here, you want to do me a favor? You want to grab two rocks glasses too? Grab the the whiskey. So he got me this amazing uh bottle of whiskey for yeah. Christmas. And it's this Japanese whiskey. Uh we actually opened it up for the first time when Jordan was here uh two weeks ago. Yeah. And oh, it, it's so smooth. It's good? Yeah, he did a really good job on picking that out. Yeah. And the problem is is this is that I with you you may or may not have the same issue. With not playing shows six, seven nights a week yeah. for the last year, I can't drink for shit. Like, I'll have one of these, and I'll just be like, <laughs> dunzo. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the, I haven't been able to drink at all. And, yeah, I like, I'll have, like, a beer and a half now, and I'll, I'll start talking shit to my girl. I'm like, hey, what's up, girl? <laughs> <laughs> 
What How you doing? doing? <laughs> what you doing later? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, you over there just looking for... And she's like, are you drunk already? I'm like, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, that's it. I saw you got that Rancid poster. Oh, yeah, dude. So this... I'm going to pull this out. So I got this at the... Uh, that sign? Yeah. That was for the uh, Dropkick Murphy. Or not Dropkick Murphy. That was... um. Uh, the other punk band, Dropkick, yeah, Dropkick Murphy. What I thought I was saying, Flag and Molly for yeah. some sec. For yeah, some yeah, yeah. So that was Dropkick, and uh, oh, it's not going back up there. You haven't even had your shot yet. <laughs> You're already yeah. fucked up. I, I'm, t- <laughs> I'm trying to like stay on the mic I, I, and like put stuff away, I, I and I'm like, I don't want to fold this the wrong way. It's nice that I don't have. Usually, I have to run everything wherever I'm doing. This is nice to like be the guest and like I'm gonna fucking be the asshole today. You do this shit. <laughs> So yeah, I've watched your podcast. Yeah. Are you running everything from your uh, from your uh, laptop then? Well, from a computer that you know, yeah, yeah kind of like you had, but it's in the basement. So I'm trying to still figure out everything with the uh, you know the mics and stuff like that. And it's been a little bit of a learning curve for me. Ah, uh, thank you. Oh, you pulled out ice too. Yeah. Oh, he knows what's up. <laughs> and he got the uh, white claw. Look at that. Yeah, that works. All right, I'll do a shot Woo! with you. I, I, want, I want to be really loud, but I'm trying not to fuck things up for the podcast. <laughs> Cheers, America. Boom. What are we talking? Oh, so Rancid, yeah. Um, on the new Scarhead record, we actually have Lars Fredrickson from Rancid doing a track with Danny on that. Oh, hell's yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Lars, is, uh, Lars is good friends with one of my teammates, um, CM Punk. And I, there are a few times I've ever been pissed off yeah. at people at my gym. It, it was Duke and Tammy. And he posts this um, post this photo of him and Lars at the gym. Wait, who did this? Uh, Duke from oh, our oh, gym. Duke Rufus? Yeah. Oh, okay. So he posts a photo with him and Lars. And I was like, hey. I was like, you guys know I'm a huge Rancid fan, right? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah totally. I was like, no phone call? No text <laughs> message? I was like, I thought we were fucking homies, man. What the fuck? He's like, nah, Lars said he doesn't want to talk to you. I was like, That's what he- I would have told you. <laughs> I was like, is he still there? They're like, no. no. He watched uh, He watched Punk Fight, and then he took off. And I was like, I, oh, so, really? I was like, this happens again. I was like, you guys call me. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm coming down. I'm a fanboy of the shit out of him. Yeah. Here, anyway, cheers. Thank you cheers, for coming brother. out. Brother. To the Zero Podcast Show. Oh, that's good. Oh, you ripped that whole thing here. You need another one? No, no, no. Okay. I'm good right oh, now. Oh, yeah, you still got to drive back. Uh, yeah. But, um, yeah, so I uh, I ended up going to, going to go see them at... um. I keep forgetting what the fuck that place is called now. The amphitheater. Oh, we were just talking about this. Yeah. What? What the fuck isn't it? Is it American Family? I don't know. That's Summerfest. Yeah. Well, nothing's open, so it doesn't fucking matter. Just call yeah. it a, the amp, the Summerfest amphitheater. The empty lot that used to be a fuck. <laughs> the the cool place we used to see where we walk about. around with our COVID walks because we can't do anything yet. <laughs> it's it's so depressing. Well, I, I will say this in comparison to 2020. At least the weather's nice. As yeah. as opposed to like, dude, I felt like was it. 20 or i'm sorry 2020 was just like dude it took till i think the end of june to actually like warm Warm up up. where now it's like dude it's like 70 it was 72 the other day i had the dog and just let her off the leash and let her run around for a while but yeah i just felt like every day i woke up it's gonna take a long time for things to be like normal though you know what i mean it's tough man i will say this like the fact that so many of the festivals have already just said that were canceled like um Festa Italiana canceled. They're saying that uh, Mexican Fiesta yeah. may be happening because it's like the end of August. Yeah. They're like, looking at the fall, but again, Wisconsinites like to go out and drink in the summertime. And it's outdoors. It's not like, I mean, if if UV light is supposed to be killing. I was, at, we're not getting into this. It's no, going to turn into politics dude. again. Uh, oh. I was in Vegas two weeks ago and a lot of shit was closed down still, but the things that were open, there's. There's a ton of people that want to go out and do things. So everything that was open was mass packed instead of it just being like everything open and spread out. Mm-hmm. I see what you're saying. You know what yeah. I mean? So everyone's still huddled together, but they say because of COVID, six feet, you can't do that on those lines and stuff like that. It was impossible. It made no sense. What's crazy to me is that um, my my friend John lives right across the street. Yeah. And he was telling me when he was out in Vegas, he goes, it's one of those where... You can walk around the casino floor, you can smoke, mm-hmm. but the second that cigarette goes out, your mask has to go up. And I'm like, you were just smoking and walking through a casino. Like, <laughs> yeah, none of these rules doesn't make sense. But I mean, I get it because they're trying to just be as safe as possible. And, yeah. and, and granted, with with the masks, it does bring things, you know, 
we we saw a spike go down. You know what I mean? So even after they lift all the sanctions, I'm sure there's gonna be people that still wear it. I just don't want to see people fighting like, oh, you're being selfish for you know what I mean? Like everyone wants to do their part, but also everyone wants to have a little freedom. You gotta you gotta it's a little bit of give and take, you know what I mean? That goes back to I don't know if we were talking about this off air. See, this is why I always said that I was like, everything we talk about we should talk about on air. Yeah. Um oh, we did talk about this on air. We're People have different opinions, mm-hmm. and no one really sees a middle ground. It's left or right. There's and really that's no. That's not the way to look at it. Yeah, and there has to be a level of understanding. The the big thing that I see for it is a lot of people talk online, and you can't you can't read um, inflection. Uh, yeah, you, like what people are really yes. saying and or or sarcasm. Yes, and I think too many people take it way too seriously. Or, but you, you want to know what's irresponsible. Is even like let's say this interview. If you just chopped up two sentences of what I said or you said and put it in a headline, it would look bad. Like I want freedom. You know what I mean? And yeah. they'd be like, "DRP says I want freedom." No, I said that in there, yeah. but I did. I said all this other shit, and people just read the headline. And go that fucking asshole. Thumbs down. Blah blah blah. I'm boycotting. They do that to everybody. Yeah. By the way, if you're part of cancel culture, this is not your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and this is not. Yeah. Don't come to Force Five Records. It'll <laughs> destroy you. I, you know, I actually debated about putting like a disclaimer, like if you are easily offended, if you're part of this, that, and the other, please don't tune in. Yeah. Because you're just, you're going to hate every second of this. They're trying to cancel Joe Rogan now. I feel like he is one of the most inflective and he listens to every scope of things and they're trying to cancel him now. Oh, what did I miss, dude? So what happened? Well, there's a few different things. Uh, He's on Spotify now, right? Yeah. So... He he's had this thing for a while. What's that transgender fighter that broke a, another girl's skull? Oh, that's Fallon Fox. Fallon Fox. That two fractured skulls. Was it two? That's the same girl or no? No. Oh, he's uh, she, she's fractured. She Fallon Fox has in the the fights that she has done. Yeah. Two girls left with fractured skulls. Okay, so all he's saying. Is if they're gonna have a class, let the transgender class be. It should be women, men fighting men, women fighting women. Have a transgender one. There's, there's a lot of push for that. Um, you there see that in states. That. Th- there's states that are making that, and the reason for it is, and and I I I agree with this. Is that there are the the reason why there's men and women sports mm-hmm. is for the fact that. Men are allocated so much money along with women for scholarships, for sponsorships, so on and so forth. What ended up happening is, is I forgot the name of the girl, but she's a girl out of Texas. There was a YouTube video that was out on her. And she had said that because of the fact that there was trans athlete that that she was competing with, Mm -hmm. that she missed out on all these scholarships and possibilities for training at like the Olympic center, so on and so forth. Cause she was just getting blown out of the yeah, water yeah. instead of taking first place. She was taking like third place. Yeah. So what she said was, is that these are supposed to be equal sports for women, equal sports for men, so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, but she has, she's technically, she's not competing against men, but she's competing against someone that has, um, the advantages of testosterone being in their system mm-hmm. for a certain period of time where men are faster than women, but, you know that that statement right there triggers people, and, and I get I, it. But why does that? That's natural genetics. Are you going to argue that? I, Can I you think argue that? You and I, I can't argue it. I, <clears throat> I, you know, I, I'd like. I'm to, not again. I'm not belittling any other person the way they feel. If you want to be a squirrel, I, I've got, I'll drink with you at the bar. Yeah. I'd probably gravitate to you first. You're a <laughs> fucking squirrel. <laughs> Do you drink? <laughs> Are we friends now? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't give a fuck about that. But you can't argue certain things. Men, naturally, not all men, but men are naturally stronger than women. They shouldn't be beating the shit out of women. Yeah. Now, some women can beat the fuck out of men. Like, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's some meaty women out there that'll beat the fuck out of you. Um, the, the point of what I was getting to is this, is that, yeah, I think the trans, the trans group should yeah. have its, its own competing class. Yes. But at the same time, I don't think and this is me kind of, I don't know this for a fact. I don't think that community is big enough to be able to have a real competitive class where Fallon Fox, I don't know how many transgender MMA fighters they, there are out there. That'd be and, interesting uh, to find that out, yeah. yeah. But I get that this person still wants to compete, but it's not It's not an even, even playing field. Not yet, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. I mean, even 
there's certain women that are out there that like Amanda Nunes. This bitch hits like a fucking train, bro. Yeah. Just ruins girl. There was a girl that had um, she had PTSD. Uh, she just fought the other day on um, Bellator. I'm trying to think of her name. Kat Zingano. She said she couldn't like be around like bright lights for like six months. That's how hard this girl hits. Oh, Amanda Nunes fucking gave her. Yeah, gave her PT- <laughs> gave her PTSD. Like she had to get all these all these scans and stuff like that. And that's a girl that just knocks out guys at ATT. Yeah, like she's yeah. a she's a fucking beast. Yeah, but yeah. I think I don't know what the right answer is for the trans thing. Yeah, but there's got to be something so that these women we, athletes don't feel like the they're world getting dicked over. Moving forward, I'm sure. Hopefully. We come cool. to a solution. We yeah. come to a solution to it. Yeah. But I think the way that you do that, though, too, is people got to listen to each other. People got to talk. And that's the big thing is that there has to be a level of communication. My thing is this, is that I don't understand the right way of doing that. Like, I don't know why. I don't think I do. I don't yeah. think I know any trans people. What I'd like I, to do. I actually know a few. I, you know what I mean? What I'd like to do is hear what their opinion is yeah. on it. And, and kind of be able to form my opinion from there. But right now, this is where my opinion is until it's influenced by someone else. Yeah. And I, I think the problem is, is that I get in the level of fairness that people want to be like, hey, you can't say that. Well, no, we have to talk about these mm-hmm. things. That yeah. We have to educate each other. Yes. Not necessarily fight and butt heads, yeah. but be like, hey... This is my opinion. What do you think? Oh, you know, I kind of like this part of your opinion. I disagree with that. And I, I think, I guess, as the world keeps moving, I, you're seeing that even in Hollywood and stuff like that. They're trying to make sure, you know, the experiences of, of, of black people, of of uh, Asian, like everything, they're trying to like make it more integrated. But there's going to be growing pains to that. Yeah. But people can't just fucking shut, like, this is the way it's going to be, boom, and shut everything down. You got to be able to listen and keep working through this. That's on both sides. Yeah. I think... I think one of the hardest thing is is that people don't have patience. You know, the the way the world is now, yeah, everything's it's, instant. It's instant. I, I say that in, in music marketing now, it's a different beast. When I was in Soar, we toured on an album for three years and just kept promoting it and promoting it and touring. Nowadays, you drop something and a month later, it's old news. Two days later, it's old news sometimes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because people's attention spans, you have this thing in your hand and you're constantly seeing new shit. You're like, oh, that was yesterday. I don't give a fuck about that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's hard. Like I had thought about that a lot when it comes to music is the fact that I remember there were track like when Usher's Yeah came out. Yeah. I think I played that for every gig for like six or seven years. Yeah. And people were requesting it. Yeah. They were for like, that long. For that long. Mm-hmm. Um Hey, House of Pain's jump around's a staple forever, brother. Fuck <laughs> yeah, dude. Hells yeah. I still play that almost yeah. every show. But um like I'll play a track that's maybe two months old. That was popular for like the first month it came out. People were like, oh, you still play that? I'm like, this shit's two months old. Like, and fuck. That makes like- me sad as artists. Like, that. it's it's so disposable. You see a lot of artists now. I'm not knocking new artists because I think I think there's some great <clears throat> new artists, but you see a lot of these guys. They're just dropping a single every month, and it gets picked up for a month. They are, people like it, and then they forget about it, and then they drop another one. And it's becoming so cheapened by it. Now I'm not. I'm, I'm saying that in like hip hop type world. In the metal world stuff, it's different because it takes a lot more to write a metal song. You, yeah. There's a lot more recording. It's more expensive. So that shit lasts longer. You know, that's why I, I'm glad like 80s and 90s hip hop icons are being respected more now. For a while, people are like, oh, that shit's old. Like, you know, Public Enemy, like they're kind of forever. But in the, in the metal world, Iron Maiden, Kiss, uh, Metallica, Slayer, forever they're going to be well respected yeah. because. It, Metal world, we remember that shit. I don't know why hip hop is not that way. You're starting to see it a little bit more now, but with the new hip hop heads, like a lot of these new artists, a lot of them, they're probably making millions of dollars. Respect to you, fuck yeah, make your money. But they're not going to be remembered. Yeah, you know, I, I I will say this as far as the hip hop scene goes, I, and I, I've said this on previous podcasts: the women, ladies of hip hop, are fucking murdering it. Megan Thee Stallion, Cardi B. Like, Snow the product. She's underground. Oh, she's dude, I know her too. Yeah. Um, I saw her. She was on a promo disc. I got back Snow? In like back in like 2012, and I was bumping that shit when it first came out. And people were like, who is? This? I was like, Snow the producer. <laughs> <laughs> she actually came to town recently, or like uh, right before COVID mm. at the rave. My old lady wanted to go see it, but I, I can't remember why she, she couldn't make it. I think I was out of town or something. I'm always out of town when she wants to see a show. Yeah. Um, where was I going with this before? Uh, oh, we were talking about hip hop. Yeah, ladies of hip hop. Uh. They're just fucking murdering it. Mm-hmm. And the production on, on all their shit is 
top flight. I can't stand a lot of the male rappers now because everything's just like so. A lot, a lot of it auto tuned. Yeah, uh, reverb. I'm, I mean, I like Schoolboy Q. He's like modern. I mean, yeah. he's a little bit older now too, but of the modern but like, he, trap artists, I like him a lot. I love Kendrick Lamar. Who doesn't like yeah. Kendrick? Kendrick, Schoolboy Q, Yellow uh, Wolf Chains. is great. Oh, we were we went to a couple of Yellow Wolf yeah, shows. Yeah. Did you wait? Did you ever get to work with him? Because I remember I, you- my, I, my his first show in Milwaukee. It was me and him on a Sunday night. There was like eighty people there, mm-hmm. and I'll never forget the minute he hit, hit the stage. I was like, "This motherfucker's gonna be huge." And here's another story. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> no, go ahead, dude. Thirty second story. No, no, tell so as many like, as you want. I'm like, "Hey, I'm gonna get a, a track with him." You know, before before he blows up. Mm-hmm. So this is when um, Trunk Music came out. Oh, dude, that was yeah, a, that was a banger. Yeah, so I'm like, "Yo, Yella." Uh, let's do this track. I was like, I'll pay you a grand to do this track. And I was talking to his boys and stuff like that. And like, okay, after the, after this, we'll discuss it more. And then he had, um, two chicks come up to him and he forgot about me after that. Cause and then two days later in Detroit, he signed to shady aftermath. Oh shit, dude. Yeah. So since then, uh, I can't get a hold of him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I yellow. If you're around, Yellow. Hook your boy to DRP up. Danny Diablo, DRP, Yellow Wolf. Let's do this. Hells yeah, dude. I He put out a country record oof, five years ago. Oh, Love Story? Was that it? Well, I mean, that's one of his records. I mean, he's putting out a ton of shit. Yeah. He said put out an album with Caskey. That's super dope. With Cassidy? K- Caskey. Oh, Caskey. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't, I haven't fought, like I haven't been keeping up to date. No. You know, with not DJing, dude, it's so easy just to just be you like. You better start uh Getting this shit together, you gotta get back on the, and do this shit soon. Yeah, you know what's crazy? Don't be playing Usher's Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy is I had to do that that Jägermeister behind the shot mix, mm-hmm. and they had hit me up, and I was like, "All right, cool." So I started going through and doing the production for it, and laying out an outline and whatnot. And I was like, "I'm like, fuck." I'm like, "Do I still know how to do this, dude?" I had to play for like a half hour before I, before I started recording because yeah, I was yeah. like, "It's like, do I, can I still mix? Like, what the <laughs> fuck's going on?" I'm like, "I can't scratch for shit." Well, you gotta anymore. do a lot of that. Um, I don't. I don't know a lot of like the modern techno type acts or anything like that. I couldn't tell you any of that. There's. I mean, there's a ton of them right now. Exactly. I mean, it's it's the the market. I haven't been out that, to a club in a while. The yeah. only time I heard that shit was when I came up by you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a ton of them, man. Um, but it's it's constantly changing, and, yeah. and that's the thing is that you know guys that were staples in EDM. Yeah. I mean, they they still have their name. But there's so many of them now. Is Bad Boy Bill still around? He is. <laughs> is he really? Yeah. Um. I actually, dude, I played with him. What? You played with Bad Boy Bill? Seven or eight years ago. No, it was before I left for Vegas. So it had to be like eight or nine years ago. Yeah. It was uh me, Bad Boy Bill, and then Carmen Electra host hosted it. Yeah. It was it was one of Silk's anniversary parties. Oh, that's dope. And it was it was it was great in the sense that like the like. They're like, okay, we're going to do four turntables, one mixer, so on and so forth. And I had to get all the equipment and whatnot. And they're like, okay. I've been like this. Where's Carmen Electra? So that, <laughs> that's the crazy part about this. So I'm on stage DJing. Mm-hmm. And the owner of Silk texts me. He's like, hey, can you drop Carmen Electra's song into your set? And I instantly reply back, no, explanation. <laughs> no, point. you didn't. I was like, whatever this girl's making, it can't be good. And so her assistant literally walks out on stage and is like, I'm going to airdrop this to your computer. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to. I'd have been like, uh, if I play this for Carmen, how nice she's going to be to me. <laughs> she gave me a kiss on the cheek. Dude, she was dating. Um, What's the dude from uh, America's Got Talent? Or not America's Got it's Simon Cowell. Wait, she was dating Simon Cowell? I don't know if that was supposed to be public information or not. Oh, but shit. My bad. <laughs> oh, headlines. Simon Cowell. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't want to. Dude, the, the five people that are watching this are going to be like, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Or I've already told this story to them. But um, they were dating at the time, so yeah, I, I didn't have a shot in hell. Yeah. I was like, that dude's got fucking long money. I was like, I got, I'm a thousand. You're a much best. better looking man, though. Oh. If I was gay, I'd, I'd bang you first. And you know what? <laughs> Keep giving him these white claws. I appreciate all the compliments. <laughs> but um, yeah. Of course, so if, Of course, if I never wanted to work again, I would bang Simon Cowell. So <laughs> see you later, Parker. But um, yeah. So her assistant airdropped the song onto my computer, and yeah. I literally, I took a listen to it, and I was like, "This is hot garbage." Did you play it? <laughs> I played it. Ah, I fuck. I bit the corporate. And you didn't dick, even bro. get a kiss on the cheek, I sucker. Got, and you know what? I didn't even get a photo with her. I didn't oh, get shit. Really? I got two things: Jack and fucking shit from that broad. <laughs> and Jack left town. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I the the highlight for me was playing with Bad Boy Bill, and then um, his guy they brought with him was a, another DJ from Chicago. 
um he was part of um the vice squad or vice djs and i was like oh, I'm, I'm like i know who the fuck you are i'm like you're a resident at such and such yeah and i was like cool and he's like dude you dropped an amazing set and i was like really i was like you didn't invite me down to chicago <laughs> <laughs> i was like hook a homie up yeah. dude milwaukee don't pay a lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm sure chicago pays a lot more for their Ooh. clubs Fuck I wonder really. how all those clubs are doing down in Chicago. Like those people got to be dying too with the COVID. They've been closed, man. <sighs> like we have. So as far as like my career with Silk goes, we have a ton of girls that come up from Chicago yeah. and work by us because all those clubs have been shut down. So I don't know what's going on with them. I I, I know the mayor or not the mayor. The uh, the governor at one point said that they had to start reopening stuff, otherwise businesses weren't going to be open. Yeah, and that's the thing, man. Is that I get it covid but at the same time you know you got all those businesses downtown they're paying those huge nuts I know. every fucking month yeah those rents on those places man yeah and i'm like I, I, ppp loan all right but if you're a place like gibson's and that fucking nut you got to make is like 50k like to pay rent on that fucking place oh, and that's that's me pulling a number out of my ass but you know whatever it is that they got to pay on mm -hmm. that building every fucking month yeah if they don't own that like you know and that's every bar down there that's yeah. every that's every office down there too. So, what do you do? Yeah. The <sighs> mid, all those venues. I'm trying to think of what's uh, not the Hammerstein. That's in New York. Um, I'm trying to think of the venue uh for concerts down there. City Lounge. <laughs> <laughs> that's which is no more. Which is no more. Wait, what? Yeah, Alex sold the bar. Shut up. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I've seen some fucking. You put on some amazing shows. Yeah, out there. we a, didn't. We even talk about that at all. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I forgot more than I. Yeah, it's cool. Dude, I, I feel you on that. Yeah. Um, I will, I will say this. Probably one of the coolest ones was I ran into you at one point. You're like, bro, I got the chick from Flyleaf playing at uh, at City <laughs> yeah, Launch. I was like, yeah, what? Yeah. I was like, Lacey. Oh, you were at that show? Yeah. Did you go to the David Allen Co. show there too, or no? No, I was out of town for that oh, one. Okay, okay. But no, that was one you told me about, and I was like. Fuck, I got yeah. out of town. I was like, God damn it. Yeah. I'm like, I want to go see that one. Yeah. But, uh, dude, it was one of those. I have a videotape of it, or not videotape, but I have a video of it on my phone. And I've showed it to friends, and they're like, dude, is Flyleaf playing in your backyard? Because they have that huge. <laughs> yeah, that huge. Yeah. yeah, that stone encounter. Yeah. I was like, yeah. no, I was like, this is City Lounge out in Cudahy. I was had like, Bubba Sparks there. Had uh, Lazy that's Bone. Right. Lazy Bone from Bone Thugs there. Dude, I wanted to see the Bubba Sparks show, dude. I, dude, I was playing Bubba Sparks. Uh, Friday. Cut a hey, you lost a gem with City Lounge, you dickheads. Fuck yeah. So what happened? You just wanted to get out? He was COVID? getting tired, just tired. And, and you know, COVID fucked things up too, you know what I mean? So yeah. he's just, he was in, in the bar business for 12 years. You, you've you been in the bar business basically for a long time. You know how cutthroat it can be and how tiring it can be, yeah. you know what I mean? Even though he, you're, you're not, you're DJing there and all that, but you, you know the behind the scenes. Dude, behind the scenes, let me tell you something. We were watching, so my girlfriend, had never seen cocktail before, and I fucking lost my goddamn. Mind. <laughs> Number one, she had she had never seen Goonies. What? Exactly. That's exactly what I said. She had never seen Goonies, so I made her watch Goonies, and mm -hmm. we're talking about like other eighty cult films. I was like, "You ever see Sixteen Candles?" She's like, "I have no idea what you're talking about." So, quick backstory, really quick. So, I was trying to make the long duck dong sample where he's like, <laughs> "Hey, sexy girl." Fr I was trying to make that my text alert every yeah. time she texts me yeah and she's like who the fuck is long duck dong and i i almost had a fucking aneurysm <laughs> i do that with my old lady all the time she doesn't remember she's she's a little bit younger than me so <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't know the 80s flicks she was born in 90 91 so so I'm, i've been making her watch all this and so circling back to what i was saying i've been in the bar industry long enough where i watch cocktails i have ptsd because i'm like oh my god i remember the exact moment in my life i was like when i left the city i was working in, i went and worked in a vacation area yeah. i was like and i did this and i was like oh and one of the guys i i, I was co-working with slept with one of my girlfriends and i was like jesus christ like i was watching like i watched 30 minutes of this and i was like i can't fucking yeah, watch done. this <laughs> <I'm done. laughs> Is this my life story? I was like, fuck, dude. I was like, I remember watching this when I was a teenager and be like, who would have this fucked up of a life? And I was like, this is an outline for my fucking life. Yeah, I was like, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> so yeah, I was like, you can watch this by yourself. I'm yeah. like, I'm going to go work on music in the studio. But yeah, um, where the fuck were we going with this? Oh, being in the bar industry long yeah, enough. Yeah. 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 Ah, that's a bummer, dude. City Laundry is such a great spot. Mm -hmm. and, dude, that patio was fucking tits. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. 
Well, hopefully the new owners, God bless them. I hope it does well for them. So hopefully, man. Yeah. We d- are you still gonna do shows with them with the new owners or? I don't know. Well, I'll have the first time again. They're drunk, and we'll see how nice they are to me. Because people either really like me or hate me when I'm jumping around the tables. <laughs> Rockers. <laughs> yeah. They're like, who? If they're like, who the fuck is this guy? Get him out! I'll be like, I'm a. But they're like, hey. I like your energy. <laughs> yeah, like you like shows. <laughs> you like making money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's work together. Yeah. Here's some more PBRs. Tell us your ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, White Claws. Yeah, yeah I, I've gone up from the PBRs, man. I still, you know what? We've had this conversation a million times. I've still yet to drink a White Claw. What? It's still never. I stick to, uh, so there's. Uh, I like Stella, Heineken's. I, I stick to um, uh, Boddington's and Scotch. Uh, those are the two things. Jesus. I, those are the only two things I really drink these days. S- sorry, we're not hoity toity over here, you dickhead. <laughs> You know what? You should have one because they're the the Boddingtons. Boddington? It's fucking amazing. And Scotch. Well, I mean, not together, but <laughs> I was gonna say you just. I'm not, I'm not like you, drinking you're like, like you're like. Welcome to the zero or the podcast show. <laughs> zero. Cool. I did. I did have a, a round ice cube in here before. <laughs> you're like we're gonna drink Scotch and talk. We're gonna talk MMA. We're gonna talk music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of something really intellectual to talk about. Well, we're going to talk politics. We're going to talk no, about... <laughs> we've already talked way too much politics. I, my show already got canceled. Yeah. It's, YouTube's t- already shut it down. We're 10 episodes in. I was like... My was- shit's got shut down. My whole All my websites. I was like, it was a good run. 10 yeah. episodes. That's what it took me. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, thank you to the five people that tune into this every week. Yeah. But um, Thank you. Yeah. Ah, oh, shit, dude. I've been having a problem with this fucking thing with trying to... I lost noise. Nah, this isn't working anymore. I lost. You blew out one of my eardrums. Sorry. I'm trying. <laughs> is it that loud? Is it loud? No. Oh. So I, uh, I try to avoid trying to sound nasally and, yeah. and Midwestern. Yeah. So I crank this up to make sure that I, I articulate because I can hear every nuance of how I talk. Yeah. And then it's one of those that if you yell, it's just. Mm. But no, it's it's all good, dude. Yell as much as you want. I I still got one ear drum. I do the Ric Flair woos, but woo. <laughs> yeah, dude. Did you ever watch the uh, Thirty for Thirty with him? No, it's fucking good. Is it? Yeah. Um, anything with Ric Flair is entertaining as fuck, dude. So they talk about they talk about like or he tells stories about how he was going around the road and he would put he have like a thirty pack of beer riding shotgun with him and all the empties would just go <laughs> flying in the back seat. I'm sure he had a little more besides those beers. He had a little. Yeah, <laughs> that uh, that old trucker coke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, one of the one of the funny stories, I f- I forgot if this was on the actual one or if it was the behind, or the uh, the extras on it. But he's telling a story on there about how he wakes up one day and he would call them aliens, girls, <laughs> and he didn't know where the hell he was. And he was in a hotel, and uh, he like wakes the girls up. He's like, hey, hey. And the girls wake up. They're like, what's up? He's like, where the fuck's my Rolex? They're like, you don't remember? He's like, remember what? He's like, you got pissed off at the restaurant that we were at last night. And you took your Rolex off, threw it in a bowl of pasta and said, fuck you. I got 15 more of these at home and stormed off. Oh, and I was no. like, I was like, that's baller. And then they cut back to him. And he's like, yeah. He's like, I just, I would call them aliens. And they cut to his wife right afterwards. And she's like, yeah, Rick wasn't the most faithful. Oh, my God. <laughs> different time yeah <laughs> 80s were mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. I, I think the 80s was really thankful there was no cancel culture around or, or videos for, you know video all the time yeah you know what i mean i'm i'm glad back then they didn't have all videos all the time uh you know what i miss like um i do miss like being able to see like all the stuff because i when i was in middle school and elementary school like I, I didn't take a lot of photos yeah like childhood friends and shit like yeah. that i thought would be great no, but you're right but the problem is it it becomes a, a thing where it's too much. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was on the flight to Vegas, and I went in my phone because I was bored, and I got rid of 4,000 pictures that was in my phone. Jesus That's Christ. That's ridiculous that I have that many shit. You, I, had, I mean, that many was, dick, you had that many dick pics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only half of it. <laughs> no, but like, well, I, for social media, I, I have to run a lot of social media uh, things for Subnoise and for Force 5. So I'm constantly screenshotting shit, putting it on this page. Right before this, what do we do? Right yeah. before we started the show, I'm like, all right, which platform should I put it on? Let's do this video. You know what I mean? Like, it gets to be, you have to do it. There's a means to ends. It's important, but it's too much sometimes. And like, the phone's constantly buzzing. 
it's we're we're losing sight of like the the nice things that we see around us. And I'm just as guilty. I, I'm not saying it's like I'm better than you. I do that all the time, and I hate it. You know what I mean? No, I agree. It's it's one of those where I feel that I'm like I need to take a photo. Mm-hmm. I need to take a video and I'm like, fuck it. Enjoy the fucking moment, especially concerts, man. Yeah. You're too busy, like trying to get that great shot. shot yep. And to be honest, dude, it sounds like shit on your phone anyway. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Take a photo. But you want to at- take it and be like, hey, check out what I'm doing. It's so fucking cool. You know, whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just uh, you want to share your life with everyone. But I feel at the same time doing that, you're missing out on it at the same well, time. See, that's it, too. Like DMX just died. Right. Everyone, you know, they grieve in a certain way. I've had a lot of friends die at overdose, all this shit. I don't talk about it. I don't talk about a lot of personal shit on my social media. It's all promotion and stuff. But, like, yeah, I'd like to post a picture of DMX, but I feel like it means more to me if I just internalize. Like, DMX meant a lot to me as a artist coming up. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? Like, But everyone does it, and I have no problem with that. But, like, I try to, like, I'm not going to post this. I'm not going to post it. Like, my kids, I try not to post too much about them, even though I want to, like, take pictures and, and post, like, for my family and see, like, oh, look, it, she got her license today. But, like... Something's got to be private, you know what I mean? Like, and as a social media stuff, too many people post all their thoughts and ideas in there. Like, oh, I'm mad at my girlfriend right now, this and that. Like, you can't do that shit, you know what I mean? So, I think over time, a lot of that is it comes with maturity. Yeah. the The biggest thing for me is is I'll take a look at the uh, the Facebook memories. I have this thing called Time Hop. Mm. There's a lot of great stuff where it brings up a lot of great memories. Yeah. But there's also times where I go. Why the fuck did I post that? I had a few things like that not too long ago. I'm like, this is why I don't post this shit. Like, ugh, delete that. It's like eight years old. I'm like, delete that fucking yeah. bullshit. And it's just so cringy. But it comes with time where you go, okay, I get it. I get how this is supposed to work now. This isn't mm-hmm. This isn't the platform for that. Like, for me, it's it's. I promote this. I promote my shows. Um, In the entertainment world, it's a, it's a necessary evil. Yeah. You have to do it. But I will say this. During the lockdown, it was nice because I just deleted all of it. Yeah. And I, I'd always said... If I wasn't a DJ anymore, if I wasn't doing entertainment anymore, I would just delete all of it. I would too, but the thing is, my heart is in, in entertainment. It's You're never going to shut that off. Yeah. I, well, when I wasn't working, I was just like, fuck it, dude. I'm yeah. like, I'm going to take a break. It was nice. Two months of not having it. Yeah. And then even even after stuff reopened, I still didn't post about it. There was, there was stream stuff that I was doing with McGillicuddy's and a bunch of uh, Milwaukee DJs and shit like that. And I didn't post about it. And I was just like, fuck it. I was like, these guys are posting about it. They have social media. I'm just going to be there, so on and so forth. Yeah. But um, yeah, dude, it, the shit's tolling. And then that's the other thing, too, is drawing the line. Where's the line of personal and business? Mm-hmm. You know, there's you want to share everything with everyone, but at the same time, like, there's... There's that crazy part of you where it goes, someone's fucking stalking me, someone's doing this, someone's taking notes of my family, yep. Yep. And, and you can never be too careful. Yep. I mean, even if it's whether you have five or five million people following you, where do you draw that line? Yep. Or the worst part is, like, uh, the shit that I constantly see, and there's people I follow on, like, Instagram and shit like that, and everything's just a fucking ad, and it's just like, fuck, will you just actually do something that's genuine genuine yeah instead yeah. of like check out my cbd yeah. check out the sports activewear so on and so <laughs> forth that is available at www check out white claws in new york hardcore <laughs> no no your own shit fine yeah <laughs> but if it's if it's something like um force five records where is that i can't see where it is this one right here boom force five white claws new york hardcore streetwear but uh yeah i mean if it's your own shit, it makes sense. Yeah. Like if it's um, like uh, I don't know if, if you painted this this painting up here, like you're promoting your own shit. Cool. And but, Tom Petty at the same time. Oh yeah. By the way, shout out to uh, Donald Top uh, on Instagram. He did the Petty, and then right behind you is uh, Bond Scott and uh, Biggie. Oh shit! I didn't even see those. Yeah. Dope. He does. He does amazing fucking work. Yeah. I've sent. Uh, do you know uh, the wrestler Brody? Mm-mm. He was a famous wrestler. He got got murdered after a after a um after a wrestling match down in Puerto Rico. Yeah, and then I, I forgot how it, it, they did a whole um, behind the ring type of deal with Jer- Chris Jericho hosts it. But uh, my friend Big Smooth's a big fan of of Brody, and he's a yeah. big fan of WWE and, and hardcore wrestling and stuff like that. And so as a thank you, because he always hooks me up whenever I go to Vegas, like he was the guy that got me in to go see 2 Chains. He's like, I've seen Nelly and like all these different rappers out yeah. at, at Dre's Beach Club. And as a thank you, I sent him a Brody um, 
painting. And I was like, dude, I was like, when you get framed up in your house, I was like, send me a photo. And, yeah. And Matthias from Jägermeister, I think I sent him a, a Bond Scott one as well. I send those out as gifts. And everyone's always like, dude, this is fucking amazing. If you look at that, there's like articles from when Biggie was in the news and shit like that. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's pretty dope. It was all a dream. Hells yeah, dude. <laughs> dude, I still play Biggie. Dude, yeah. it's, you know what's crazy to me? Dropping hypnotize and seeing college kids. I was fucking, gonna say they, they couldn't be that old to remember that shit. I'm like, you were you kids were literally scratches in your kids and yeah, yeah. your dad's fucking jock strap <laughs> when this fucking song came out. Like yeah. kids that were born in two thousand just going fucking ham to Biggie. Yeah. And I'm like I'm like, how the fuck do you know this? I was like, Do you have like an older brother, older <laughs> sister? And they're like they're like, Everyone knows Biggie and I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. Or the really weird thing is is like when you get like college kids that come up to you and they go, yo, do you got crisscross? And I'm like, shut the what? fuck up. I can see like Beastie Boys or something like that, but no. they don't crisscross? I was like, I had- That first crisscross record's still dope. Dude. Uh, that was the bus. That was Jermaine Dupri, dude. Yeah, he produced yeah, that shit, yeah. dude. Dude, he was just, he was on fire back uh, yeah. then. But- um, Warm it up, Chris. I'm, I'm about, about to. to. <laughs> uh, that was beats are dope. That, that was the ongoing joke whenever I'd play with uh, YB, Chris YB. Yeah. Um, I would always like before he would go on before me, I'd drop warm it up, Chris. And he'd be like, he'd be like walking him to stage. He's like, I'm about to. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was on here. I think episode three, he, him and Steve Marks um, being able to talk with the other DJs is always a, always a fucking blast. Yeah. Man. Do you, do you get to hang out with like other artists too? Like I'll say guys from force five, or is it just like, you just keep it kind of tight these days. No, I mean, I kick it with whoever, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. but like I said, lately since the COVID, Mm. Haven't been able to like really go out and see many people, so yeah. God damn, I just want this shit to be over with. I want, dude, I want to just rage into the summer. I, I'll probably die once they open everything up because I'm gonna lose <laughs> my fucking mind. You're gonna see me running around Milwaukee naked as fuck. Trust me, <laughs> dude. A case of white claw under white one arm, <laughs> just young. Woo! Freedom! <laughs> like, what the fuck is wrong with that guy? Ah, oh, fucking hell, man. Yeah. But, what the hell else did we have to talk about? The Ruckus Mixtape, uh, Soar, M.O.D. Oh, you know what? I wanted to circle back to. How the hell did you end up end up with Primer 55? You never told me a story. Um, basically, this is a funny story. My first solo record I was working on, I was trying to collect a lot of like the, my favorite artists to like do songs with me on there. So I had already The Rugged Man on there, Potluck, Critical Bill from Detroit, which they were signed to Tech 9 for a while. But uh, I, Justin Morales was working at the Rave. He's like, hey, Primer 55 is doing a show here. You should come in and you know say what's up to him and try to network. So I'm like, yeah. I was like, actually, I wouldn't mind getting Jason on a song. So <clears throat> I went to the show. You could tell Jason was having his issues and stuff like that. And uh, I talked to their manager. I'm like, hey, I'd like to do a song with Jason. They're like, okay, we'll, we'll talk about it. But um, they're like, um, I can't remember exactly how it came to be. I ended up talking to Bobby Burns, which... Me and Bobby have a strained relationship now, but whatever. It is what it is. Uh, he's like, hey, you rap? Are you like, Can you do other things besides rap? I'm like, yeah, I've been in a metal band my whole life. I was like, So I gave him a sore CD, and uh, I was like, just check it out. But I was like, I, you know, you, me, and Jason should write a song together. I was like, I'll, I'll hook you up with some money. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll make this legit. And uh, like a month later, he hit me up. He's like, hey, Jason is not going to be in the band anymore. We're looking for a few people to try out. Would you be interested in trying out? And I said, of course, you know. And uh, he's like, here's two songs. Get this done by this weekend. Let me hear what you did with them. And we're, we're going to, you know, make a decision. And the songs were like, they weren't really Primer 55. I'm like, is he fucking with me? I, I don't know. But I was like, well, I'm going to write to these two. I, I have those demos somewhere. I, I really got to uncover those fuckers. Um, <clears throat> so... I got the call, like, I sent him to him on, like, a Sunday, and on Monday, he called me up. He's like, hey, do you want to uh, join Primer 55? I'm like, fuck yeah. He's like, okay, we're going on the road in three weeks. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> so just so you learned all the songs Yeah, I learned all weeks. the songs, yeah. I had one practice with him. We went. To, I went down to Atlanta. We had a rehearsal the day before the tour, and then I went out and toured with him. Half the songs, I mean, I knew about 80% of them, but I had to learn, like, 15 songs, and I'm like, I can't remember all the riffs and stuff like that and I, I remember I would write notes on my hand for the first few shows and be like and the crazy thing the, the other two guys that were in the band it was me Bobby Burns 
and Billy Gray and Frank Fonsieri. Frank was from Stuck Mojo, huge Atlanta band, mm -hmm. but now Frank and Billy are in Fozzie with um, Chris Jericho. Jericho. Yeah, they're you good know friends what? of mine. Oh, when they come back to town, I'm fucking pissed. I had to work. They were playing a show on a Wednesday uh, at Shank Hall, and I wanted to go to it so bad. I actually, in my like regular DJing at Silk, yeah. I play Fozzie all the fucking really? time. Yeah. I remember when, um, was it Do You Want to Start a War came out, and I remember Chris Jericho tried to describe it as like a dance track. And yeah. I was like, that's not a dance track. I was like, it's a fucking great fucking song. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they've done some amazing. If that's the new lineup mm -hmm. in the last probably four to six years, they've done amazing work with that band. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. that's all them. Yeah. Um, it's it's Billy, Frank, and um, Rich Ward from Stug Mojo, too. Okay. Yeah. Rich Ward's a phenomenal guitar player. Billy Gray is phenomenal. They have the greatest one-two punch, and their guitar is sick. Yeah, if you're not, by the way, if, if you're a, a rock metal fan, uh, and shit, if you're even a wrestling fan, Chris Jericho actually has some fucking pipes on him. He's mm -hmm. actually pretty talented. He uh, talk, him and Sebastian Bach keep talking shit to each other right now. What the <laughs> fuck? Not, I don't know. It's just some Twitter war or whatever. Dude, if I was Sebastian Bach, I would shut the fuck up, dude. That guy, Sebastian Bach can sing like a motherfucker. That fucker was doing opera at one point, yeah, dude. Yep, yep. He's got some fucking pipes on him. But I'm like, seriously, though, Chris Jericho is fucking yoked. And he's yeah. he's in his early 40s, yeah. yoked. And I'm like, you don't want a piece of that guy, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. You just got CTE. Yeah, I don't think Fozzie needs uh, a security guard. Because Rich Ward used to be fucking big as fuck, too. And Frank, Frank the Tank, man, the drummer. <laughs> yeah. Like, those, guys, those boys will fuck you up. Dude, of that, what is the fucking story that all the drummers got to be like the fucking crazy dude of the group? I just remember, like, Fink was nuts from, yep. uh, he did Reverend E. Yeah. Ensor. Yeah. No, he was never in sore. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Fink was nuts. Tony, Tony was like, certifiably insane. Certifi I remember there was a time we were hanging out with him, and someone started a fight with Tony. I think he broke a fucking glass mug over their head. Yeah, yeah. Were we in... Was that Cutty or was that South Milwaukee we were in? Fuck. I just remember like... Uh, Which Tony fight? There's been a million of them. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> like, I remember at one point looking over to Tony, I was like, dude, I'm like, I fight a lot. I was yeah. like, but you yeah, he, he fight a, a lot. He's a lunatic. <laughs> Um, who else was another drummer that was fucking certifiable? Any drummer on the planet. Yeah, pretty much, dude. They're all fucking nuts, dude. Yeah. Neil Pert was the only one that was actually level. Yeah. <laughs> I always tell this joke. I always say, what What do you call a drummer who just lost his girlfriend? What? Homeless. <laughs> <laughs> Every drummer gets so mad at me. I'm like, it's true. <laughs> like, you're right. <laughs> oh, it's fucking crazy, dude. Oh, um, where are we at? Shit, we did an hour and a half? God damn. Is it really been? Yeah, it's 8.30. Uh, all right, well. <laughs> Let's see. What, what else we got to plug really quick before we take off? We talked about DMX. Oh, uh, Sabbatic this Friday. Yes, Sabbatic this Friday. Danny Diablo. Uh, Danny Diablo's in town. He's doing a guest DJ gig in Sabbatic. Um, I can't remember the address, but... Uh, it's literally right down the street. It's okay. on second. Uh, oh, second and national. Okay. So, da Danny's in town. We're finishing the Scarhead record. Big Left's in town finishing his record, and then we're all going to party Friday night. The whole Force 5, Milwaukee chapter, plus Big Left, Danny. Danny's doing a DJ gig. Antihero Productions is putting it on. Force 5 records will be in the house. So come out to, if you're in Milwaukee, come out to Sabbatic on Friday night. We're going to party. Yeah, I'm going to try and stop out early and just say hi to you guys. I have a, I have a previous engagement I have to handle all weekend, so I'm going to stop out at 8 o'clock, and i got to cut out at night. All right. Um, what else do I got? Ruckus. Uh, the Ruckus Mixtape Volume 2 is out. Force 5 Records. Get on there. Uh, dedicated to a uh, good friend, Saint Dog, who passed away recently. That project should be done next couple of weeks or so. What, Saint Dog Record? Yeah. It's almost done. Yeah, almost we're, done. We're, we're putting a release date on it soon, so it'll be Suburban Noise, soon. Force 5 Records. Check out Force5Records.com. Uh, get yourself some swag. What else we got? DannyDiabloMerch.com. Hardcore Streetwear. Uh, what else? Combat Records. We already brought that up. Mm -hmm. Ruckus Mixtape. Sabbatic Friday. Oh, and Texas. If you're in the Texas area, number one, I don't know how the fuck you're watching this podcast, but thanks. Uh, <laughs> 420. Number two, 420 Party with uh, Force 5 Records, DRP, King Relic, uh, Milwaukee Zone. Make sure you come on out for it. Donnie. DRP, thank you for coming out. We're definitely gonna do this again, dude. Um, yeah, we got whiskey and white claws. I'm fucking ready. Oh, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I had <to> do once. <laughs> All right, thank you, brother. Hey, that's us. Uh, catch us next week. We will have DJ E. Rich 
uh, on the podcast next week. And then uh, I believe I have to find a new guest for the following week. But uh, once again, everyone, thank you for tuning in. Uh, We'll see you next Sunday, 7 p.m. Peace out. Mahalo.